scholars, my fabulous second and third graders, I was just fidgeting in my chair to get comfortable and thought, were any of you fidgeting since I saw you last? Well, now that I'm comfortable and we're all settled in, let's go on for another day of learning with Making Meaning and sharing our strategies focus on visualizing. Remember, as we share and think together, you will need a talk partner. So I'm gonna give you a few minutes now to go grab one, be it an animal, a sibling, a stuffy, your choice. Scholars, earlier in the week we read the birthday swap and we've been practicing visualizing, making pictures in our mind, then using that to help us think deeper about the main character and how they feel throughout the story. We're going to use our sentence stems today to help us share our thinking. Repeat after me. I pictured blank. I think blank is feeling blank. And then for your challenge, I think this because blank. Do that with me now. I pictured blank. I think blank is feeling blank. I think this because blank. Wonderful. What were some things that you imagined in your mind about Lori yesterday? And how did she feel in that part of the story? Go ahead and turn to your partner now. Scholars, some things you could have shared with your partner are that you pictured Lori in the market getting her tomato, and that you thought she was feeling intrigued or curious if that would be the right present, but she's not sure because she asks the kitten. Maybe you were thinking about how she was anxious when she was at church. We all have different things that we might be imagining in our minds, and that's okay because we have different experiences in our lives. Today, scholars, we are going to go to the last part of the birthday swap, and I'm going to reread this part to you while you get your visualizing brain going. I want you to picture with as much detail as you can. Then once we share with a partner, you'll have the chance to draw and write about your visual visualizations. As a challenge, remember, you could also be thinking about the words that helped you for your why. You think she feels that way. Okay, go ahead and close your eyes as I read. After church, we drove to Tio Daniel's house. When we arrived, something incredible happened. Surprise! Happy birthday, Lori! Feliz cumpleaños! Everyone was there. My grandparents, aunts, and uncles, all my friends, our neighbors, my cousins from both sides of the border, everyone. But I said, it's not my birthday. Well, it's like this, Cookie explained. Because my birthday is in the summer, I always get a big party. But since your birthday is in winter when it's too cold, you never get one. So this year, I thought I'd swap with you. After all, I'm getting a little old for this. So, Cookie smiled. Happy birthday. I was so surprised, I hugged my sister and ran to join the party. What a day. We swam in Tio Daniel's pool, we played tag, we ate. There was a lot of food. I can't even remember it all. In the center of the table was the beautiful cake I'd seen at Tia Sabina's the day before, with seven candles on it, six plus one for good luck. When it was time for the pinata, I got another surprise. It was the donkey. Everyone got three tries to hit it. 
I felt a little bad about that, but mom said it was okay since all that candy made the donkey's stomach hurt. But the best surprise came last. It was a plain box with a bow on it. Dad said, this is from all of us. Guess what was inside? It was something I wished for more than anything in the world. A puppy. I picked her up. She wiggled and licked my face. Her name is Spicy, I said, and everyone clapped. I played with Spicy and had some more cake and ice cream. The sun started to set. All right, scholars. What did you see in your mind as you listened to that part of the story? Think through each part that we read about. Go ahead and turn to your partner. Perhaps you were sharing about how, how in this part it was a big backyard in Tio Daniel's um, house where it was barbecuing and lots of family and friends there to wish Lori happy birthday or feliz cumpleaños. Um, I think that she is feeling in this, Lori is feeling in this part, probably pretty excited. So I want you to think now how you're going to draw this. Take a few minutes to think about what you might want to add to your drawing that you pictured in your mind from this part. You're going to have about five minutes to draw. So add as much as you, detail as you can about what you remember and pictured from this part of the story. When you're ready, you're even going to be able to write a couple sentences describing your visualization. We'll put the sentence stems up for you. In the book, The Birthday Swap, I pictured blank. I think Lori is feeling blank. And for an added challenge, you can add this. Helped me understand because blank. Go ahead and start drawing now.
go ahead and put your drawing supplies down, as hard as that may be. I know when I get going, it's hard to stop. Place your drawing in front of you. Close your eyes again, scholars. Go back over your mental image at the end of this story. Think about all the details that you pictured. And then look back at your drawing. Think to yourself, does your drawing reflect what you saw in your mind? Did you think and draw about the cake or the games and the pinata? Where the story takes place? How did you draw Lori? What does her face look like? Does it show how she's feeling? I'm going to reread this part one more time. While you add to your drawings, listen for details you may want to add. Well, again, while I'm reading. Okay. After church, we drove to Tio Daniel's house. When we arrived, something incredible happened. Surprise! Happy birthday, Lori. Feliz cumpleaños. Everyone was there. My grandparents, aunts, and uncles, all my friends, our neighbors, my cousins from both sides of the border, everyone. But I said, it's not my birthday. Well, it's like this, Cookie explained. Because my birthday is in the summer, I always get a big party. But since your birthday is in winter when it's too cold, you never get one. So this year, I thought I'd swap with you. After all, I'm getting a little old for this. So, Cookie smiled, happy birthday. I was so surprised, I hugged my sister and ran to join the party. What a day. We swam in Tio Daniel's pool, we played tag, we ate, there was a lot of food, I can't even remember it all. In the center of the table was the beautiful cake I'd seen at Tia Sabina's the day before, with seven candles on it, six plus one for good luck. When it was time for the pinata, I got another surprise. It was the donkey. Everyone got three tries to hit it. I felt a little bad about that, but mom said it was okay since all that candy made the donkey's stomach hurt. But the best surprise came last. It was a plain box with a bow on it. Dad said, this is it from all of us. Guess what was inside? It was something I wished for more than anything in the world. A puppy. I picked her up. She wiggled and licked my face. Her name is Spicy. I said, and everyone clapped. I played with Spicy and had some more cake and ice cream. The sun started to set. All right, I hopefully you added some more details to your drawing. I wanna show you my drawing and how I did this, um, my entry for today. Okay. We have in the book, The Birthday Swap, I pictured Lori at her cake with her family all around singing, Feliz Cumpleaños. I think Lori is feeling ecstatic and just like you, I also had to go back and revise. I think this because in the text, it said she was so surprised and she ran to join the party. And uh, also in my drawing, I have the barbecue going with her uncle, Tio Daniel, and her new puppy, Spicy. Those all seemed important. And on her face, I drew a big smile. Everyone was in a great mood. Her arms are up because she's so excited. Scholars, your drawing might be similar to mine. It might be slightly different but we use the text to help our thinking. And that's what's so great about visualizing, is everyone's is always a little bit different based on their experiences. How fun that we get to make movies in our own mind when we read. Go ahead and why don't you put your artwork on the fridge so that everyone can see what you've been working on. Over the last three lessons, we have built on our reading strategy of visualizing. We took what we knew about using our background knowledge and the text for what's happening in the story to then think about the main character and how they're feeling throughout the whole story. This is a strategy you use whenever you're reading. And now it's time for you to go practice this on your own. The more you practice, the better you get. Get your Just Right books, read for 20 minutes, stopping every couple pages to think what's happening 
And what am I picturing in my mind? Then share and write about your visualizations. Using the sentence stems, my book is blank by blank. In this part blank. I pictured blank. I think blank feels blank. And for a challenge, this helped me. I think this because blank. Remember, I have my book here that I've been using for my IDR, Those Shoes by Mary Beth Bolts. And I marked the end of my book. I'm going to um, read you my part of the book, how I thought about it, and then share what I wrote in my journal entry. That night, I am awake for a long time thinking about Antonio. When morning comes, I try on my shoes one last time. Before I can change my mind, the shoes are in my coat. Snow is beginning to fall as I run across the street to Antonio's apartment. I put the shoes in front of his door, push the doorbell, and run. Okay, so I'm going to stop and think what happened. In this part, he's in bed thinking about his friend Antonio and the shoes, and if he really needs them. And then he goes and drops them off on Antonio's doorstep and runs away. I picture him laying awake for a really long time with the shoes right next to him and staring at them. And then I picture him slowly putting the shoes on his doorstep, ringing the doorbell, and then quickly running away. I think Antonio is feeling thoughtful because in the text it said that he is laying in bed for a long time thinking about Antonio and thinking about his friend and what he needs. Okay. Now it's your turn. I know you're going to keep doing amazing learning and growing your brain because you are brilliant students of Seattle Public Schools. Keep on learning.